Hi, you guys. It's me, Carrie Ann. Oh my God, it's been so long. How are you guys? I have missed you. Thank you so much for waiting around for me. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Carrie Ann Ingram. I am a Reiki master. I'm a healing life coach. I am here to help people feel better. I help with mental awareness, mental health, and I am so honored that you have stopped by to watch what I have to say today. Thank you so much. Um, sometimes on my channel, I do healing, so you can go back and check out a video um, to see what that's all about. And you're gonna hear some jinglies because I wear tons of my healing bracelets. So I apologize from now, but I love, I love the way it sounds. Um, but before we dive into today's video, I want you to like and subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss out on anything that I have to share with you guys. And, you know, since I'm so like sparse in my appearances, which I really am trying to change, and I hope that I will be able to change that and make this a more regular appearance, um, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And when you have watched enough of this video, I hope you like it. And if you do, share it with your community. Sharing is caring, you guys. Ah! I missed you guys. So today, I'm going to talk about where I've been, what I've been up to, and what um, led me to take a break. And I took a break from social media. So in June, I took an entire month off. I call it zenning out. So I shut off from social media. I shut off from speaking to people. I took a vow of silence. So if you want to hear more, stay tuned. So the beginning of the year was a little bit rocky for me, I'm not going to lie. Um, with everything in the media going and circulating around child abuse, um, with the whole R. Kelly situation and a few more other people that were in the you know news um, about this, there were no noteworthy people. Um, it got to me. It got to me on a deep soul level where I felt really affected and I felt helpless and I felt I um, I felt like I dove back into my own pain, my own childhood pain, and I couldn't get out. I felt like I was literally falling in a hole of despair and I wanted to escape it. Um, I wanted to find healing, but I didn't know how. And I felt guilty and ashamed because I'm like, here I am, a healer. I heal people for a living. I do this and I and I do this well because I transmit the universal energy that is available to every one of us. And I'm having a difficult time applying that to myself. What is wrong with me? Oh my God. So I really, really, really struggled with that at the beginning of the year and leading up to May. And in May, I kind of had, sorry about that. You're going to hear my dog sapping up his water in the background. He's thirsty. <laughs> um, so yeah, in May, I kind of hit rock bottom. Not I kind of, I really did. I was very, very sad. Um, and I couldn't find the strength to show up in the capacity that I needed to for you guys. So I started to back out and I started to experience thoughts of wanting to fully give up. I mean, give up on life. And that's not me. Um, that has been me, you know, my younger self uh, in my early 20s, which was a long time ago, you guys. Um, but, you know, I was like, this is not worth it you know I'm, I'm facing all my childhood crap i don't have real help with it um my mother and i that relationship is super rocky she um got upset at me for confronting my childhood abuse and it just really really got me down so i wanted to retreat and because thankfully i have a base and a really really supportive community of badass women and one man <laughs> um they supported me and held me up oh my god you guys they were my pillar and i was able to stay centered and grounded and focus in on what i needed and what i needed was to remove myself go silent go within have a conversation and have communion with the divine so that i could come back stronger than than ever and remember what i am right so 
I did that. In June, I announced to you guys that I'm going to take some time off. Um, that I was going to take a vow of silence, that I was going to cut off from social media, and I did that for the entire month of June. Um, uh, um, yes, for the entire month of June, um, except for the first weekend in June because my dog got sick, so I had to come deal, come back in to deal with that. But for the rest of the month, I was out, and it was amazing. I did not talk. I focused in on myself I meditated I went out in nature I spent a lot of time in nature and I communed with God I got personal again with God and I also you know focused in on my space I decluttered I decluttered my mind I decluttered my physical space and I was creative I painted I you know read I just it was so beautiful it was so beautiful my soul was so happy you guys so much so that i kind of didn't really want to come back because that's breaking up you know that separation but i understand that i live here <laughs> i have to come back so i came back but this time um i came back very slowly i integrated very slowly back into society and it has been incredible you know my manifestation game is on point y'all it's on for link i'm able to think it and so it appears um and this is the beautiful thing about extracting yourself and allowing yourself to be connected to the everythingness, you know? And I want everybody to feel this joy. I want everybody to experience just being in flow, just being in alignment with who you are and what is possible for your life. You know, we forget in this busy world, we, we, we submerge ourselves in the things that are tangible which are insignificant where we need to focus is internal energy lies within us and we have access to this enormously powerful energy source that governs our entire planet we could have be do create anything on this planet as long as we are able to tap into it and focus and that comes through meditation you know and I'm so glad that I hit rock bottom in a sense because wanting to end your life and today I'm talking about this because it is September and it's National Suicide Prevention Month. You know, bringing awareness to the fact that there's 800,000 people that die from suicide a year. <laughs> you know, like that's insane which is works out to be 40, you know, that's like a person dying every 40 seconds. Every 40 seconds. That's insane. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people struggling with their mental health. And more awareness needs to be situated around this. We need to talk about this more. We need dialogues. We need conversations. We need safe spaces that individuals can show up and talk about what they're struggling with. And for me, um, I started to talk about my abuse, my physical and sexual abuse online. Yeah, actually, it's physical, sexual, mental, emotional, everything um, that I encountered as a child, as an impressionable child. And during the time that I took off uh, in June, I also you know, was obsessed with learning about the mind and how the mind, um, the brain and mind connect to the body and connect to the energy system and why I was still struggling with my, um, my abuse. Why was my childhood trauma still resurfacing and controlling my adult life? You know, I really wanted to get to the bottom of that. So I read a lot of books and I read a lot of scientific journals, you know, in the hopes of understanding myself and also understanding um, other people and their struggles so that I could help. Um, because a lot of us struggle with this. A lot of us are struggling with this. You know, there's seven point... I, I, drop the stats before 7.6 billion people on the planet 400 million of those give or take struggle with depression and anxiety and combining the two because they 
more often than not they if you struggle with depression you also struggle with anxiety but those are staggering numbers and i say give or take because so many individuals do not report or talk about their struggles around that area because there's a lot of shame there's a lot of fear embedded around talking about that because they're afraid that um, people will judge them people won't accept them people will criticize and people will blame when in fact that shouldn't be the case you know we're struggling um our planet is sick because we have abandoned love and adapted to hate let me say that again we have abandoned love and adapted to hate hate is not a thing a feeling an energy source that is um a norm to us love is but we have abandoned it to accept something that is a part of us that was more prevalent when we needed it to survive physically survive fear we no longer need fear to survive in that sense we don't have physical threats that are constantly attacking us daily we don't have wild beasts that are chasing us you know that we have to run for our lives where the flight or um the flight or fight um uh stance or state kicks in no we are living in safer environments but it's here now that we have the battle that we're running we're fighting we're trying to flight we're trying to escape our own selves which is insanity because we can't escape our own selves right and in so trying to escape ourselves we are um picking up substance prescribed substance and illegal substance trying to numb what we're facing inside ourselves but we can't numb it, you know, because it's all, it's an energy that's flowing through us. And we need to turn the lens around and look at ourselves internally, look at ourselves and see what it is that we're facing. What is it that, that is sitting there troubling us that we keep um, allowing to control our lives? What is it, what is this thing that we keep revisiting and reliving day in and day out? Why are we doing this? Where does it come from? What is the source of this? Once we figure that out, we are then able to heal through it, do the work that is needed to break it down. So for me, in my time off, um, what I did that was so, 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 so powerful. And I invite you all to adapt some of these practices in your life. They're so simple. Honestly, they're so simple. You can do them right now during this video you can start to adapt them what i did was i got sleep yeah sleep is vital sleep is so important because the different stages in our sleep pattern allow us to heal our brains allow the new the, the neural pathways to connect allow our neuroplasticity to heal <laughs> allow ourselves to be at rest literally just shut down allow our body to rest that is so important for our healing secondly i was in nature i was out in the sunshine you know i was amongst the trees and the water and just basking in it and allowing that energy source to heal me it's so important we are a part of nature and when we disconnect from nature we feel it we feel like a thread has been cut there is a literal disconnect so we have to find ways to get back into balance get some plants in your life you know have um some time where you spend time going outside if you live in a warm country kudos to you you have zero excuse get outside be in nature often train your kids take them outside be in nature and um for me nature is a lifeline for me 
when I feel stressed, I need to go walking in nature. I need to sap up that energy. I need to hug a tree. You know, as woo as that may seem, I literally need to ground myself and pull from the earth's energy. And it helps. Um, so, slept, nature, meditation, you all, we hear the buzzword, meditate, mindfulness. It is so important. It is so important to just shut down, shut up, and allow God to speak to you. Listen. I say this and I hear people mm, always find an, an, an excuse to negate why they can't do this. This is bullshit. Yeah, I'm going to fucking swear. It's bullshit. Commit to your healing. Shut up. Shut it all down and be quiet if there's things running around in your head that is the more reason for you to shut up and shut off so that you can start to let it slip away let it be i have a meditation um training video teaching you how to sit and be still so that you can connect with the divine energy and meditate mindfulness meditation is even easier you just be present be here now what's happening in and around you what are your thoughts what are you feeling what are the sensations that are happening in your body become aware of yourself stop focusing outside of yourself focusing on things that are irrelevant to the growth of your well-being and start focusing inward inward is where it's at inward is where all the answers lie you know Oh, I can't stress this enough. When I first um, experienced extreme burnout and left my job in 2014, like I, my, I have a really good girlfriend who recently said to me, she's like, "You're not. I cannot see you going back into the worst force because you have, you have such an intense PTSD attached to that. Because I was so damaged. I was so damaged from this place, and." Um, a lot of people are, you know, they are abused in the workforce and they feel that they have no other recourse. So they internalize it. And when you internalize pain and trauma, it eats away at your insides. You get cancers, you get a rheumatoid arthritis, you get, um, you know, heart failure, heart disease and other degenerative diseases. We could fix that. We could really fix that by just being present, being present with self, being present with your environment and accepting all the beauty that's around you, focusing in on all the positive things that are within grasp, within your grasp, you know? And when I say within your grasp, it doesn't have to physically be in your grasp where you're tangibly grabbing at something. It just has to be in your mind's eye. Create the life that you want in the present. Sit down, be still, be silent, and project the life that you want to live, the people that you want to surround yourself with. You don't have to stay in a place of misery. It is not the end-all, be-all. You are not destined to be miserable. Believe me when I say this. You are not Misery comes, yes, because of the things that have happened to us and how we have attached ourselves and given them these things meaning in our lives and how we um, habitually ruminate on the unpleasant experiences that we've had in our lives. And sometimes we're unaware of this. But once you become aware and you have the tools to work through these things, do it. Use them. Because I'm going to tell you, you absolutely can heal yourself. All right, so we spoke about nature, wait, no, sleep, nature, meditation, so regular and mindfulness meditation, exercise, energy healing. So I'm going to exercise, which means active, doing activities that you're moving your body, you're moving both sides of your body, which engages your left and right hemisphere right and this allows you to get the happiness endorphins pumping 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 keeping you healthy keeping you well keeping you happy keeping you engaged 
really important for your healing and energy healing. Being in tune with the energy that you're omitting and the energy that you are receiving. So you can do this yourself. You can sit and just be in stillness. So when you're doing your mindfulness practice, you can focus on the energy that is swirling in and around you. Or you can go to an energy healer like myself and have, you know, a long one hour, 60 minute session done to remove all the ickiness that you have accumulated within yourself and around yourself. Some amazing stuff, you know, um, be mindful of the foods that you're putting in your body, attaching love and gratitude to the foods that you're ingesting. That is so important because your body literally is a temple. It is housing your soul. It is a shell that you are wearing so that you can walk around on this earth and have the tactile, physical experience of planet earth, right? So you gotta take care of it. If you want to still be here and experience it, your soul's never gonna die. But if you wanna be here on earth and have a well-lived life, you gotta protect the shell. You gotta protect this armor. Yeah. So these are some of the things I did. Just a few. I did many more. Like I journaled. Um, I positive self-talk. So I gratitude journaled. I wrote down everything I was grateful for down to the minute thing. To the fact that, you know, I'm grateful that I have water to drink. I'm grateful that I have a bed that I can lay my head down at night and get a good night's rest. I'm grateful that I have a mind that can decipher between the things that I have done that have caused me pain and the things that I have done that have caused me joy so that I can focus more on the joy and create more of that. Just little things like that. I would just write it down. I'm grateful for the people that, you know, that are in my lives, the people that are coming, the people that are already here. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the incredible life that I have created, the incredible life that the universe has given to me. I am so grateful. These little things, repeating them, writing them down, seeing them, allow you to create more of that magic in your life. And you are capable of magic. You deserve it. <laughs> You're on this planet for a reason. Each and every one of us was born onto this planet because we have something beautiful to share and give and experience. You don't have to live in pain. You don't have to live in a self-created hell. It is not your destiny. Your destiny is to find the heaven here on earth so that your soul can be fulfilled. We are all interconnected. We're all intrinsically one. So when pain and misery surface, Remember this truth. Remember that you are in control. That you can heal yourself. And this too, whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. And you will see a brighter day tomorrow. Guarantee. We always do. It might not be physically or literally tomorrow, the day after today. But it will come. You just have to be committed to do the work that will get you there right repetitive practice habitually showing up for yourself and doing the work that will get you to the next step which is joy so i hope that i've shared a bit um of my journey and i hope it has been helpful um it definitely helped me i'm in such an amazing place people keep telling me oh my god you're so going yeah i am i am oh and another like vein part of um, the benefits that I gained from taking that month off. I lost. So I started um, that month off weighing 164, 65 pounds. I've never weighed that much before in my life. I'm 5'3 and a half. Don't forget the half. Um, but yeah. So I started to feel uncomfortable. I couldn't fit into my clothes. I couldn't move. I couldn't turn without like it pinching and just I felt so uncomfortable and so I, 
I knew I had to do something to make a change. And I thought about working out and I was like, oh, oh it's going to be so painful. Oh my God, it's going to be painful. Because I was thinking about the process, right? Before I even started. Instead of just being like present now and just doing it. Like Nike said, just do it. Just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I love to run. Just get outside. You know what? I don't need. I don't even have to start off running. Boo boo. No no. I can get outside and I can start walking. Walking, walking, walking. I have a dog. I have to go walking anyways. So I started to go walking. I started to go for long walks and enjoying it, and started to get my body back into pace with that. Then I was like, I can go for a run. And if I feel tired, I'll just stop. So I went for a run. And if I felt tired, I stopped. And then I continued that until my body was like, you can run miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. I got up to 17 kilometers. Yeah, running 17 for 17 kilometers nonstop, just like leisurely and could have done more. My body feeling incredible. I, you know, and I did that in June, July, a bit in August. You know, I'm starting to taper off because it's getting cold, but I'm still running. I love running. Um, but walking, too, was a huge part. Walking for two hours, walking for three hours, no problem. It's warm. It's summertime. Why not? I have two feet. They work really well. Two feet. Two feet. Um, they work well. So what, what, what am I complaining about? It helped. So I... I'm now 139 pounds. Yeah. And I still, I haven't really changed my eating habits. Um, except for, I think it was in August, I started to sporadically eat one meal a day. Um, just only eating when I was hungry. And it turned out to be one meal a day. But that wasn't my intention. My intention was to curb, you know, this excess weight but it wasn't a psychotic focus i just started to do the things that felt right to me and it all works together you know one doesn't work by itself i can't do one without the other so meditation allowed me to get back in my breathing to breathe correctly yoga i started to do yoga as well start back with my yoga practice um that those two allowed me to get centered with my breath um and breath work is so important for our overall well-being but it also helps us to be able to run and to breathe correctly while running um so yeah those are the things i did and i guarantee that you can all benefit from what i've shared uh, if you've ever done anything like this, I would love to hear about it. Um, cause taking a whole month off from the world is a lot. Um, but the benefits are incredible. So if you've done it, I would love to hear. So share, share below. And if you want to do it and you want to learn how more in depth, the detail of how I did it, share below. I want to know. Um, yeah, that is it. I think for the updates of what I've been up to um what i've done and where i am right now i'm so happy i'm happy i'm content um i'm not stressing about my business not doing as well as i wanted it to be you know and before i took the june off i was stressing about that i was like oh my god i want to do so many things oh my god it's not where i envision oh my god am i failing am i this da, 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 la 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 None of that. I am living in flow. I am being present so that when the universe sends me what is meant for me, I'm ready to receive it. There's no fear. There is no desperation. There is just acceptance. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. And I can feel myself healing from my pain. <laughs> you know, and it feels so good. It feels so good. I'm so cognitively aware of myself, of my thoughts, when things come up, 
that um, my triggers, when they pop up, I'm aware of them and I'm able to do the right things and implement the right tools to block them. So I want you guys, I want you guys to experience this as well, you know, so let me know what I can do to help you um, get there because it's beautiful and you deserve to be happy. You deserve to live in flow. You deserve to heal. You deserve to heal. You deserve to be happy. Trust me when I tell you this. And you can heal. And you can be happy. I promise you. So, thank you so much, so much, so much for sticking it out with me. This has been a long one. 31 minutes so far. Um, but I love you and I appreciate you. Um, and I pray that you got something from this video. Um, yeah. Stay tuned because I will be dropping more. So if you liked this, if you loved it, if you feel that somebody within your circle can benefit from what I've shared, if they're struggling, if they are battling depression, if they are on the fence, you know, um, and you can sense that suicide may be something that they are struggling with, please send this video to them and also show up for them, be there for them, be that light, be that beacon that you were meant to be in another person's life. But most importantly, be that beacon in your life. I love you guys so much, truly from the depth of my soul. I love you guys and I want you guys to be happy. Be well until next time. Talk to you soon. Much love. Ba ba do do